Today on the Backwoods Iron Chef, steak over a fire. I'm Zachary Fowler and you're watching 87 Days, the complete reenactment of all I did out on History Channel's Alone Show Season 3, but as if I did it here in Maine with the resources we find here, how I'm doing it differently, and how I might do it differently next time if I go out on Alone All Stars to defend my 87 Days title. And this is episode 22. And um, we're going to work on the inside of the shelter a bit. I, as you can see, I dragged up a big pile of rocks from the uh, river. I'm gonna try and work on my fireplace a bit, which is gonna be an ongoing process. When summer hits, I wanna do a rocket stove in there. But for now, it's gonna be a fireplace, cook a steak, maybe build some shelves, and a little bit of decorating. A little bit of decorating today. Not too bad, just a little bit of snow. You know, well away from my bed, well away from my fire. I kept the hole as small as possible. That's the hole I added last week to increase the amount of smoke that goes out. Managed to bring some good rocks up with me. A sled made it easy so I could take up some big ones from the river. And uh, out there in Patagonia, I had to go over eight stories to where I built my shelter. So there, and eight stories up, there was just topsoil that was like four feet deep. There wasn't any rocks. So every day when I went down to check on my fishuation in the morning and in the evening, I'd bring home about two rocks around this size. My fire pit out there was literally paved underneath because it was, everything was four, like I said, four feet of topsoil. So I had paved underneath with stone a stone around, stone built up, stone built out from that in different places, my seating area built out, all of it so I could sweep it out and had um, even like cobblestone the floor in the majority of the area that I was kind of, that I lived in and it was just dirt under my bed with my my blanket. Everything was kind of on the opposite side out there. And uh, so I mean that, that burnt a lot of calories but it also made me comfortable and it had a nice secure home that was warm and cozy. So I'm gonna try and do that here and uh, I'm gonna get on that right away and then build a shelf and some other things. Uh, Cause I wanna get that fire going. I got a steak with me and some other tricks to show you and some other neat things that we can play around with. So where to go first? I already pulled these rocks out of here when I dug this initially and I wanted to dig this out back this way so I could put hot rocks underneath where I sit and I could even sit a little lower. But uh, the ground froze. And luckily in Patagonia, it never froze. It, it was, it froze like an inch or so deep. Um, despite the fact that it, you know, it was freezing cold at night most of the time, the, I don't know what it was, that four foot of topsoil, it just, it, it was amazing. Beautiful soil there, the most beautiful soil I've ever seen. It was unreal. I mean, that's what gave me the ability to always dig grubs and worms and always be, you know, digging and, and, and dig traps and which turned out to be useless, but good stuff. Oh, I love it when you find the two rocks that fit together really well. 
and then a plan, like uh, what did they say in the A-team? I love it when a plan comes together. So I'm building a base, because I want my fire to be on that. There's lots of roots here, you get ground fires. I don't want to wake up some morning and the you know, fire started just outside of my fire pit because it's chasing roots out of there. So I'm building a good, good stone hearth. Oh, she's gonna need a good sharpening after this. There we go. If you can't move it, smash it. Yeah, that works. I'm gonna get a little fire going in here. Be able to cook my steak on top and create a bit of a draft with this hot rock. This rock being the thermal mass, creating a draft so it comes up in just one place as much as possible, keeping the fire in here to the back. This has gotta be, it's like the worst time of the year to do this. Um, each trip I come up here, as I work on the place this winter and do more stuff up here, I'll bring up more stuff. I need to bring up now some sand from the river with the next load of stones because I want to grout in and around all of here. I don't want my coals ending up down in here and creating that root fire that I talked about. So it'll be a work in progress. It'll get a little better each time. I don't know how well this stone will hold up under the heat. So it might just be a one-time thing. The bigger the stone, the more when they get hot, they tend to crack. So let's see if I can get my today's fire going and then I'll work on some other projects while the it's that rock's heating up. I'm gonna throw that steak on there. Mm -mm. It's gonna be good. So I got something a little different today. I got my little quick flame up stuff here that flares up really quick, but you gotta light something else off of this. Something uh, a little more flammable than just your tinder bundle. I was all prepped up, ready to go. I come up here, so I'm gonna try something different. This is part of my EDC. This is a sear strip, like I sell on my website. Fire starter strips, but also can be used for waxing stuff, patching things, a million things. And this one's been in here for a couple months. So I'm gonna see if I can't use this to get this to flare up and start this waxed fire starter strip that I keep in my wallet with the wazoo. Fire starter necklace. I'll just tent it over the quickly flammable stuff and give her a spark. There we go. Go see your strip, go see your strip, go, 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 go see your strip. Move it to the back. The nice thing about these sear strips, if you're real thrifty, if you really want to be, you pull it back out after you've lit your fire, boom, there's still another maybe one or two fire lights in there. If I had even pulled it out sooner, once I got my tinder bundle going. Toss it right back in the wallet. I got another light to go out of her, at least. It's gonna be awesome! As long as the rock doesn't get hot and just go um, there's something you want to be leery of. River rocks can explode. So it's something you want to be careful of. Um, I've, I've used a lot of them in the past, never had a problem, but I've also heard horror stories and seen videos of people's rocks just exploding. I think for the most part they're like round, I don't know, maybe like a marbly quartzy type of rock, not quartz. Um, I don't know what, I'm not good with rocks. Round rocks that blow up, round river rocks. But don't quote me on it, just be cautious. 
Well, she's all loaded up. And, uh, as usual, smoking up a little bit until it gets warm. It starts to draft better. I'm going to run out and get some building materials so I got something to make while I'm sitting around here waiting for it to get hot enough so I can cook my steak on. Alright, score! Got a nice piece of pine that's already partially hollowed. So I'm going to split this one and this is going to be my breathing pipe for the fire that's down low and lets air in to right in front of the fire so that it draws air from outside instead of all the nooks and crannies that should create a better drafting thing. I'll work on that next time. And some other stuff. This is going to be my new plate. And I'm going to turn this into shelves. I have to make a mallet. I think I'm gonna do that actually. Alright, got my mallet and uh, a few nice slingshots for later. Oh yeah! <laughs> Who's your daddy? If you take your time, you can split or move just about anything with the right size wedge. A proper application. So, I got one in here, I'm gonna turn, I was gonna just gonna make one plate, but it looks like if I split down the middle, I can get two plates for my indoors here. So, adding a couple more wedges to move it, move that crack down here slowly so it comes out nice and even. Fire's looking good. Ow. 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 Rock is hot. Time to put the steak on. Time to put the steak on. Got myself a nice little steak from my local union market. And not going to do much to it. At home, I'd probably uh, saute up some mushrooms, some nice shiitakes, pan sear it, and then take it out and, you know, put it on the grill or something like that. But we're out here in the woods, so we're just going to keep it simple with Redmond's Real Salt. They were wicked cool after I got back from alone. They saw that there was on TV in the background, their salt shakers were on our shelves, and they sent me like this huge care package of tons of stuff. Keep it simple here. At home I might pan sear it in a little bit of olive oil and then take it out and grill it or something like that. But we're out here in the woods. So we're just gonna see how a good hot rock can cook a steak. Oh wait, here's some sizzling, it's working. Not as much sizzling as I might like, but that's all right. Might take a little bit of time. A little more salt on this side. Oh, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. I'm going to put some shelves in here. Do a bit of decorating. Beautify it. I think I'll put them over here. Next to... In the kitchen area. I think I dulled it with today's digging. That's my, uh, this is my carving edge. These ones I don't bother to sharpen all that often. This one I like to keep sharp, like knife sharp, or as sharp as you can get it with a file. I don't go too, too crazy.
Whew. All right, look at that. Very nice. Just pegged it into the wall. Boom, boom. Not quite sturdy enough I couldn't like stand on it as a step. But uh, pretty cool for a good first shelf. Put my first tool on there. My mallet. And maybe my chopsticks. And uh, throw my, my two uh, cutting board and my plates up there. Let's see how that steak is doing. Oh yeah, look at that. That looks nice. Something else neat. Cordage. I want to do a video on it. And either make a, completely make a, a whole net with it. Or, or a uh, fishing line and catch a fish on it. And a guy showed me this at uh, Blade Show this year. That is so neat. I believe it's Joe Flowers. If you guys know, have met him, you know who I'm talking about. Wild, excited guy. Great guy. Super exciting guy. Kind of guy. I'll just make one piece for you and show you how it's done. And he told me he learned it from his travels with some uh, native people from somewhere that use it all the time for making like all of their cordage to do like everything that they possibly could need to do. And it's kind of a neat little sit around the fire thing and, and work on it. So basically cut a strip about four inches wide and I cut it this way on the bag because now it's one continuous long strip and it doesn't have the seam at the bottom. So you can make the most cordage out of it possible. If you cut your bag just right, you could probably get, I don't know, I haven't done one bag to find out exactly the amount of feet, but if you cut it the way I just cut it and keep doing it that way, you'll get a good result on the long longest pieces that you can make. So now that you've got it cut, so you take your piece and you're gonna fold it into the center here. And again, in into the center, both edges into the center. It's hard to do in front of the camera. Fold both edges into the center and then you fold that closed so that they fold in half. So that's three folds, it creates a nice smooth strip. And then you kind of work it on something so you get it nice and, nice and smooth. Take your piece and you put it into your mouth and you're gonna take it and you're gonna twist it and then pull it, extruding it. And that twisting it up, that heat and that friction causes it to weld to itself and you end up with a plastic piece of line. Ah, you get too carried away and go too quick and you break it though. There we go. There's one nice piece of line. Look at that. And it's really strong. I mean, look at how ah, strong it is. But it's very important that when you're doing it that you fold those cut ends into the middle. And as you're pulling, you can see this. Uh, See what's happening as you watch it, as you're pulling, you see it turning into this from this. This is twisted, and then as it pulls, it becomes like that. You want something stronger? You take that line you just make, made and turn it into something bigger. Little uh, twist, twist, turn, twist, twist, turn, and you can make yourself a beautiful little bit of double strand line, very strong. You thought it was strong before, but man, now look at that. Maybe the single strand stuff you use to build the shelter, the double or fishing line, if, you could, if you're really meticulous with it, I, I'm certain I could turn this into some fishing line. I want to make a video on that, catching a fish with garbage. But, uh, I mean, 
It'd be fun to also make a uh, gill net. I might do that. Just sit at home in the evenings and turn all my Hannaford bags, all my grocery store bags into cordage <laughs> and, uh, and make a gill net out of it. Trash bag gill net. There we go. Look at that. A beautiful piece of trash bag cordage. Save my little piece of cordage on my new shelf. I think it's time for some steak. Oh, look at that. Huh. It's just right, like a, like a, a warming table. Got my steak. My fire right there, keeping me warm. All cozy in here. It's not as warm as it could be. A lot of frost is still permeating everything. But, uh, oh, it's good. I think it's time to eat. Say some grace. I want to thank you for this food and this day to be out in the woods. Bless this food to my body. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, guys. As usual, I'm gonna eat in front of you and make uh, make noises of, of pleasure while I consume my beautiful steak. I'll cut her in half and see how well I did. Well, ah, uh, I was too busy playing with pieces of trash. I went just the teeniest bit too far. I like it pretty darn, pretty darn pink in the middle. It's, it's cooked. It's not so pink as I like it, but that, I'm sure, it's gonna be pretty darn good. It's a nice fatty cut I picked. I do love. Mmm. Nailed it. Nailed it. Mmm. Wow. That is really good. Just that Redmond's real salt. And, uh, cooking another fire, and I kept ooching it around so the edges of it are getting sm smoke on it. That is delicious. I haven't got as much done this month as I meant to, but I think it was good. I needed a break. I was putting out three videos a week, really pushing it. Before Christmas, trying to get out as much stuff, as much content as possible. Good, but good content. Just working non-stop on that. And uh, I think I'm going to do that every year. Just kind of take January off a little bit. And do like one video a week and keep it to a minimum. Give myself a little bit of a rest. Because now I'm all fired up. I've got some little bit of filming I've been doing still. Because I never sit still. And uh, all these videos I've started filming on. To work on besides the survival stuff. And uh, next week we'll get out here and do some more, hopefully some fishing involved with that. And, and maybe even, I was thinking about heading down to the ocean and uh, at least looking into it because we're not allowed to just pull lobsters straight free. But talk about how I would harvest something here in Maine, talk about some ocean harvest, maybe even get a lobster. Since we'll have to get it from the store, bring it up here and do a lobster cook. A little surf and turf or uh, some clams and and stuff like that, because I could harvest some seaweed and we cook that up here, that would be delicious. And, um, keep working on the shelter more. I love that I did that clear roof on it. I think that was a total win. It'd be so dark in here if I had done, if I had managed to find the time to do the whole roof with reeds. Mmm. I don't know what it is about cooking food outdoors, it's just so good. I mean, I know some of it is this, the feeling of accomplishment that you been in the outdoors and you're breathing the fresh air and, and stuff like that but I think it's more than that I think when you cook over an open fire there's just so much more flavor and there's I got some nice maple wood that I was cooking it on mmm best steak ever today on the backwoods iron chef steak over a fire just look at the marbling and the texture there to the the smoked over the fire, just beautiful piece of meat there. Mmm. Mmm. Nothing to complain about, but I might just have to watch some YouTube videos on how to do a perfect steak. I've never bothered to 
try to learn how to do it. I just half the time they turn out right and the other half the time they don't. And if I'm honest, I'm a cheater. I cut, I cut into my steak. Now I know there's memes out there that say, real man don't cut into their steak to find out what the color is in the middle. This is awesome. <laughs> I love this. I got, I got my hot table here. This is great. I got my hot table, got my fire underneath of there warming me. And the smoke's working now that it's up to temperature out the ceiling. Cooked my steak on it. Ah, I just wish I could stay out here, but I gotta get home in a little bit. Go get the littles. Head home. Tomorrow we got some adventures we're going on. Hopefully, now that January's over, and get back into it. Spend some nights out here. Have some fun. Mmm, 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 mmm. Darn, that's good. That is good. Well, it's been fun as always. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. Fowler out. I gotta do my dishes.